Hey guys, Chris here. Today I'm at Lake Tahoe and today we have a story about a man who comes out to Lake Tahoe, rents a boat, and what happens next is very haunting and tragic. That's next. Hey guys, beautiful day in Lake Tahoe here. We got a story and I also have a beer. I have a hazy little thing, IPA, and that is by the Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. We're gonna drop that in Lake Tahoe. thing IPA Ooh. <laughs> it always always get the suds there like that that is really tasty so we are at Lake Tahoe and Lake Tahoe is a really large lake in fact it's the largest alpine lake alpine meaning high elevation in North America. <clears throat> it sits at 6,225 feet elevation and it's got 72 miles of shoreline around it. Measures about uh, 21 and a half miles long, about 12 miles wide, and it's 1,645 feet deep. Wow, that is a deep lake. It is the second deepest lake in North America. Number one being Crater Lake, Crater Lake National Park, which is really cool. And that is 1,942, 42 or 43 feet deep. It's a giant caldera crater. <laughs> and this lake is really cold. Its average annual temperature is about 53 degrees. That's average. So in winter, it's actually colder. Summer, it's a little warmer. But here's something I learned about the lake in summer. It's about 63 degrees, but they, I read that that's surface temperature. 18 inches below the surface, Lake Tahoe is about 53 degrees. So what can happen is, you can jump into Lake Tahoe and if your body's not acclimated to the cold and say it's summer and it's a hot day and your body's used to 75, 80 plus, your body will react by your mouth opening to get some air and as you're jumping into the lake, your body's half mostly submerged and then your mouth will open to get air and you'll go under with your mouth wide open. People drown like that. And a lot of people drown like that. 
in this lake. They're just not aware of how cold it is, how deep it is, how wild it can get. It, the waves can be three, four feet tall on this lake when the wind comes up. And it can come, come up pretty suddenly. It's, it's fairly calm right now, as you can see it behind me here. And I also heard that in between the waves, these three, two, three, four feet high waves, there's only a gap of about three feet. So what that means is if you're out in the water and these waves come up, say you're way out there, the waves will just pummel you and pummel you. You won't even get a chance in between waves. Or if you're on a boat, the boat can get swamped and it's really hard to recover once, once you start taking on water. So just a couple years ago, 2020 to be exact, August 10th, a young man from New Jersey, his name was Ryan Normoyle. He was 29. He wanted to take a three week vacation and come to the West Coast and just travel around. One of the things he wanted to do was go to Lake Tahoe and explore. I could totally relate with this guy. He, he rented a boat from the Ski Run Boat Company just for two hours, a two hour rental. Started exploring the lake, went out into the middle of the lake. And then that evening, his boat that he rented was discovered just south of me here in a small community called Glenbrook. It was washed ashore down there. He was not in the boat. They found his gear in there, some of his clothing, and they also found his cell phone. Very interesting. The cell phone provided two pieces of information for them. Number one, it had GPS coordinates on it. They assumed after this young man rented this boat and then they found the boat that evening washed ashore, they assumed he most likely drowned out in Lake Tahoe. But the GPS coordinates on the phone gave them the last data of movement and they were able to have like at least a general area to look because when a when a boat drifts in it was out there somewhere you have no idea where the boat was so it drifted in and also on the phone the cell phone they found some footage of Ryan Ryan Normoyle and he was enjoying the day on the boat and at one point in this footage, he slows the boat down, apparently stops the boat, and he gets up on the side of the boat and he jumps in to Lake Tahoe. And from what they could tell by the footage, it looked like he was way out there, pretty much in the middle of the lake. The next thing you know, Ryan emerges from the water and this is all on the video, so he must have had a tripod on the boat looking the direction he was jumping. And, and he, had a, he emerged out of the water of the lake here, and there was a look of horror on his face and panic as the boat that he was just in steadily was moving away from him. Turns out he left the throttle just clicked on just enough by accident. He was unaware that the boat was left moving, the propeller was moving. He swam frantically towards it, and that was the last footage we saw of him as the boat took off. Cell phone video, um, it basically showed him jumping off the boat. It looks like he was uh, maybe playing around, uh, playing in the water, and didn't realize that the boat was in gear. And, uh, he wasn't make, able to make it back to the boat. Wasn't going very fast, probably who knows, two, three miles an hour, maybe four miles an hour, maybe maybe five. Just speculating here, but usually it's like a trolling speed in that lowest setting. And it was just enough to make him think that the boat was probably off because when you're in the middle of the lake, you have nothing to judge it by. You have no, you know, you don't see any movement because the, the, the lake, you're just like, it feels like you're just moving all the time anyways. So immediately the South Lake Tahoe Police Department put together a search, search and rescue, volunteers, 
They also incorporated the South Lake Tahoe Fire Department to help locate Ryan. Obviously they started on the shoreline just in case he was on it, maybe still alive. You know, you, you never know. If you don't have a body, you're, there's always this hope that, you know, he made it somehow. But as the days went on, they lost that hope and they knew most likely, certainly with the GPS coordinates, that that was the last location. So he most likely drowned. He wasn't able to make it back to sh shore. They also got other organizations involved. They had UC Davis, which is University of California Davis. And they were able to help with weather and currents. This lake has really underwater currents and things can move around apparently. And so if a body went in at one location or somebody went in and the current was going that way, then most likely the body would have slowly moved that way as well. So trying to really zero in on this effort to find him. This was August 10th when this started. So after several weeks of these organizations searching for Ryan Normile's body, they weren't having any success. They weren't finding him. And the family at this point was really losing hope that they would never recover their son and that he would forever be out in the middle of this lake somewhere. It was just a really hard thing to deal with on top of losing their son. Now they can't even find his body. Turns out they were able to hire this organization called Bruce's Legacy. And what they do is they specialize in deep water recovery. This organization is headed by a man named Keith Cormican, and he's a specialist with this equipment, how to operate it, boats, and recovering bodies. So once they got them on board, it was now they're well into September, and this was August 10th when he went missing. Keith and his organization were out somewhere out here, probably five, six, seven miles. It's about the middle of the lake. It's about 12 miles wide, like I said, so halfway out, middle of the lake. They used underwater sonar, and they were able to locate an image on their screen that looked like a body. So they're looking, they, they can see what rocks, what are rocks, they can see what's sand and whatever else is down there. And they found potentially a body. So now they had a location to start working to recover Ryan. So they got their rove in the water to now try and get right down to Ryan and see if they could actually grab him. And the rove stands for remotely operated vehicle. Pretty cool equipment. You can you can test temperature obviously, shoot video, and this particular one had claws on it that could grab and they could use them to try and get a hold of Ryan. A lot of trial and error that they went through to try to locate Ryan. So at one point they got this rope down to Ryan. The machine was able to reach out with Keith operating it and grab a hold of his wrist. And from what I read, this first attempt, he, his arm slipped out, his wrist slipped out, and he slid like another 20 feet into the lake here, 20 feet deeper. The waves came up, making it really hard, and so they, you know, day after day for about three or four days, they had to just cut the, cut the mission short. Finally, in the fourth day, they got the rope down, they got to Ryan, now he's at 1,565 feet deep. They got it down to him. They grabbed him by the wrist with the rove, and they were able to start pulling him up. For whatever reason, they were concerned about him slipping out again. Maybe it's the, the waves, 
and, and the, you know, kind of pulling on the wrist or something. I'm a fisherman, so I understand a line in the water with weight and trying to work it in. So what they had to do was they took this, the line that they had and they went hand over hand for two and a half hours to pull Ryan up because he was so deep. And they just didn't want the machine to do it because the machine is not sensitive to the, the weight. Like, like fishing, for example. When your fish is fighting you, you give him a little space, a little slack, and then when he's not, you reel him in a little faster. So that, that, that's my theory on why they were doing that. So after two and a half hours, they finally recovered Ryan Normoyle from Lake Tahoe. It turned out this 1,565 feet deep was the deepest recovery in North America. It was a record. We drove uh, the RV up to him and grabbed a, you know, grabbed a hold of his, uh, his wrist. Keith Cormican says it's the deepest water recovery effort ever conducted in North America, and it wasn't easy. And the waters were really rough. We had three or four foot waves out there. But finally, after three days of trial and error, the body of Ryan Normoyo was brought up 1,500 feet to the surface, a rare case of closure for a family whose loved one went missing in the Tahoe waters. A record for the recovery of a body. They were really grateful that they were able to find him locate him and recover him, bring him out of the lake. And so they were happy to have some good news for the family to tell them, we at least found your son and he's coming home. The family was extremely grateful. Obviously they lost their son but they knew at least he wasn't gonna forever be in the bottom of this very, very deep lake. It was just a chilling feeling for them to think that they would never see him again. And he was just gonna be out there in the cool depths of Lake Tahoe. So they were really happy they got him back at least, and they could just focus on grieving on their son, Ryan. And it turns out Ryan, I could really relate to this guy. He was a, a budding outdoorsman. And he was just starting to get out, checking out you know, parks and traveling and really kind of getting in the outdoors. He was also a, a woodworker. He liked working with wood. He'd make tables, things like that. And he did, uh, I believe, uh, carpentry, like finish work or something. Loved by many, a lot of friends, had a really big heart, and uh, I could really connect with this guy. He didn't really make any huge mistakes. It just one little thing got missed on that boat, and um, it was just too much. It's just, it's a rough lake out there. Really, really rough lake. When it wants to be. That's the thing, just like the mountains, they can be, great most of the time and then a storm comes up and your life can change in a New York minute so but Ryan uh, was 29 when he passed and he won't be uh, soon forgotten all right you guys Beautiful day out here. Just a very beautiful day in Lake Tahoe. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Things are happening on my channel here. I really like that. And uh, it just makes me excited to really get out there and do, do what I can uh, when I can. And uh, looking forward to doing more. I got more stories, more adventures planned. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. As always, keep hiking. Through a mirror in the ocean To see all that I want to see I made you fall